one may ask how fundamental these measures may be. Perhaps one can come up with a better measure for randomness. One of the most surprising results in algorithmic complexity is what is known in mathematics as the convergence in definitions. This is a phenomenon similar to other types of convergence in definitions, such as in the notion of an algorithm in the 1930s, when people such as Kurt Gödel, Alonzo Church, Alan Turing, Emil Post, Stephen Kleene, Rosa Peter, among many other others try to characterize the notion of an algorithm by different independent approaches that turned out to be all equivalent among each other in computational power. Given the sense that the concept of algorithm had been mathematically been captured by all these characterizations leading to what is known today as the church turing thesis. There is the strong belief that any practical definition of algorithm will collapse into an equivalent definition to the one that Turing or Church provided. Something similar has happened with algorithmic randomness, leading to what Jean-Paul Delahaye, my former PhD thesis advisor, calls the Martin Love Chaitin thesis, similar to the Church Turing thesis. The Martin Love Chaitin thesis is the thesis that all definitions of randomness will be equivalent to one of the previous characterizations. And indeed, when people such as Per Martin Love, Greg, Greg Chaitin, Andrei Kolmogorov, Leonid Levin, Klaus Peter Schnorr, among many other independently proposed characterizations of randomness, they also found that all these definitions were essentially the same as they were equivalent among each other when the church Turing thesis was assumed as almost everybody does in the field, because the definitions of computation also appear to be very robust. And so not only each of those definitions of randomness were able to characterize intuitive notions of randomness such as compres compression, predictability, and typicality as discussed before, but they also do so in a very general and comprehensive way. Notice, however, that statistical randomness is not among the list of equivalent definitions of randomness, because surprisingly, even when it is pervasive, its use in science and also its misuse and abuse, statistical randomness and approaches such as Shannon entropy are measures and approaches that do not provide the accepted mathematical characterization of randomness. So, we have seen how, according to algorithmic complexity, in, if an object is random, then it is impossible to compress it. We have also seen how compressibility is a sufficient test for non-randomness. That is, if you find a short computer program for some data, then you know that the data is not algorithmic random. On the other hand, we also briefly mentioned the concept of lack of particular property that we call typicality. So we don't call random something that is atypical because it can be described by using that lack of typicality or that special particular property. It turns out that this intuitive concept is also related to other intuitive properties of randomness. In particular, you can see how something being atypical can be used to compress an object. The basic idea is that if something is not typical, then the non-typical feature gives you some sort of handle to pick that object among more typical objects, which contradicts the intuitive idea that it is random and is related to the concept of compression. One can also devise statistical tests for these kind of properties, but one first thing is to formalize the kind of allow, allow properties, such as the so-called recursive properties meaning that those properties that can be characterized by computer programs, which is a generalization of the properties that can be characterized by traditional statistics, given that computer programs can easily capture any statistical regularity with even low computational power, such as regular languages, but the other way around is not true. But it was Per Martin Love, the Swedish mathematician and student of Kolmogorov himself, that devised the universal test to test a sequence for any recursive or computable property, thereby technically achieving any, another formal characterization of randomness. As an example of a recursive property, it can be whether a sequence has an even number of ones, 
or whether the digits of a sequence are the digits of a mathematical constant, such as the mathematical constant pi, that comes from a short computer program implementing one of the many formulas that can gener generate the digits of pi. So random sequences can then be characterized by failing to meet any property that a computer program can code. Finally, another characterization from which we started at the beginning in the list of intuitive properties related to randomness was that of the unpredictability of a random sequence similar to the characterization of Shannon entropy. What people like Klaus Peter Schnorr and others mathematically proved is that it is impossible to make money by guessing the next digits of a truly random sequence when using a recursive or computable betting strategy. And that is something to be expected, but if you are using Shannon entropy in practice, it will fail because you can simply produce a random sequence with no statistical patterns, but generated by a pseudo-random generator, and you can predict every digit, yet Shannon entropy would suggest it is random. However, it is when there are no predictable patterns, statistical or computable, that the sequence can truly be deemed random. This convergence in definitions of mathematical randomness, removed from Shannon entropy, means that each definition assigns exactly the same randomness at, as each other. In other words, the extension of each definition is the same. The set that each definition characterizes contain exactly the same objects, thereby strongly suggesting that each definition has proven itself to be fundamental in a mathematical way. We can write this elegant result in a compact manner as a causal chain, so incompressibility implies unpredictability, in unpredictability implies typicality. Typicality implies unpredictability, unpredictability implies incompressibility, and by extension incompressibility also implies typicality and the other way around. A series of universal results, both in the sense of being general and in the sense of Turing universality, leads to the conclusion that the definition of algorithmic randomness is mathematically objective. In summary, Martin Love proves that there is a universal statistical test that can test for all computable properties of an object, but is uncomputable or semi-computable. His definition of randomness is therefore general enough to encompass all effective tests for randomness. Schnorr shows that a predictability approach based in betting strategies leads to another characterization of randomness, which in turn is equivalent to Martin Love randomness. Chaitin proves that an algorithmically uncompressible sequence is also Martin Love random, hence showing all the rest of the equivalences.